This video is a case example of using Vela's hip navigation to optimize leg length in the setting of a significant leg length discrepancy. There are three different ways to use the Vela software during surgery to obtain leg length data to make an intraoperative decision for final implants. I will use all three methods here in the same surgical case to demonstrate the breadth of the Vela software. I will use the same progression with this case example that I used at the time of surgery. The first image to obtain is a contralateral hip x-ray of the normal hip with maximum offset. This image is taken with a 10 degree oblique x-ray of the proximal femur with the leg internally rotated 10 degrees. To maximize the offset of the non-operative side, you mirror what you would do on the operative side using the Vela's hip technique. This fluoroscopic image is then flipped using the C-arm function and saved. This Vela's one trial method assumes that the patient's contralateral hip does not have pathology and that the hips were symmetric prior to the disease state. The second method uses a Coleman block type technique, where pre-surgically I had the patient stand on a measured block to obtain his preconceived leg length discrepancy. With this patient standing on blocks pre-surgery, he felt that he was between 8 and 9 millimeters short on his arthritic side. The third method uses a traction view of the operative hip before starting surgery. This x-ray is taken with a 10 degrees over and 10 degrees of internal rotation of the leg to maximize the femoral offset. This method assumes that we can correct the patient's leg length pathology through axial traction. However, the downside of this method is that the patient may have lost significant offset with their hip disease. If this is the case, the offset numbers may not accurately reflect the pre-collapse condition of the hip. Another problem encountered with traction method is that by pulling traction, you can inadvertently shift the pelvis. The surgeon may get a teardrop error if the pelvis has moved. The traction method is a technique that I frequently use for femoral neck fractures. I reduce the hip anatomically at the beginning of surgery and then use these images as reference for the one trial analysis. The beauty of all these methods is that these images can be obtained prior to starting surgery. The reference points are then marked by the sales consultant while the surgeon is operating. With the trial implants in place, the images are then used in the one trial analysis. The first one trial demonstrated here is done with the contralateral hip overlay technique with a size 9 standard offset stem and a plus 8.5 head. I'm trying to match the contralateral side, so I want the leg length to be zero. With the one trial numbers here, the patient's leg length is zero. The femoral offset is plus three, and the total offset is minus three. With a positive femoral offset, I know that this is a stable hip construct. I also perform an instability trial, confirming that this combination is stable. At this point in the case, I commit to the standard size nine stem and a plus 8.5 head. My personal preference is to have a slightly negative total offset number with a positive femoral number versus a five millimeter positive total offset number and a 11 millimeter positive femoral offset number. I think either choice of stem, high or standard would work for this patient. I prefer not to increase the total offset with an anterior hip approach as patients tend to feel long with added adductor tension. Next, I ran the one trial against the ipsilateral hip without traction with the final stem in place. Before surgery, when the patient's standing in Coleman blocks, he felt that he was between eight to nine millimeters short. And therefore, a goal number for this one trial would be a length number between eight to nine millimeters. As stated earlier, the offset numbers are likely going to be positive as the femoral head has collapsed and the center of femoral rotation has medialized. Therefore, the offset numbers will be different on this one trial than it would be done on a native non-collapsed hip. With this one trial, his leg length is nine millimeters and both femoral and total offsets are positive. When analyzing the one trial data here with the final stem in place with a plus 8.5 head, the patient's leg length is nine millimeters positive from the preoperative non-traction ipsilateral view. At this point, I had two separate one trials verifying the patient's leg length. I then used the traction ipsilateral hip view method as a third check. With this method, my goal is to be around zero millimeters of length. The traction view method is the most variable of the three methods as the amount of traction applied can vary. With this example, leg length still came out to be zero, which would be the goal if the correct amount of traction had been applied. Using these three different methods, we have verified and confirmed that the goal leg length of nine millimeters was achieved with a stable hip construct. This demonstrates the beauty of Vela's hip navigation to assist in making data-driven decisions.